Hello again, I'm Ramez, the developer of Avocadol and the co-founder of Binary Lunar. Today's video is brought to you by my partner Lena. She has been experimenting with machine learning of Unity for a couple of weeks and today we will show you how to train your agent to collect game objects and place them at desired locations. So let's get started. We have used the ML Agents version 0.10 and we provided the download link in the description to make sure you have got that. Let's rename the scene to the cleaner because it will be cleaning the fruits and bring them to the correct places. Unzip the ML Agents. Open ML Agents folder, go to the Unity SDK and copy the contents to the root of your project. Change the background color if you want. For this video we have prepared some sprites to be used. A lemon and watermelon. And our hero, the cleaner, in addition to a wood borders. Change the texture type for all images to sprite 2D. The piece of wood seems big so let's decrease its size by increasing pixels per unit to 250. And to avoid placing many wood pieces we can do tiling on X by setting the mesh type to full rect then do tiling on the X axis Rename the game object to top wall and change the tag to wall because machine learning perceive game objects using their tags. Also add Vox Collider 2D and change its size to match the wall. Then duplicate top wall to create bottom right and left walls. Create new game object and name it Fruit Spawn Points. Create uh, a child game object. Name it Spawn Point. We will use those spawn points to spawn a fruit, a random fruit, in a random location soon. Also add Box Collider 2D and set it as Trigger. Change the size of the collider to 2 on X and 1.5 on Y. We're just using that to see the areas of spawn points. Then duplicate the spawn points to create 12 spawn points. And deactivate the box collider 2D for all of them. Now drag the basket to the scene and reduce its size by increasing the pixel per unit to 400 change its color to something yellow to refer it as being a basket for the lemons and change the name of the game object to lemon area and also add a tag name it lemon area then add box collider 2d and set that as trigger now drag the lemon to the scene and reduce its size by increasing the pixel per unit to something maybe like 1250 and make it on layer 1 to be above the basket. We need to reduce the size a bit more. Then create 5 copies of the lemon and make them all a child of the lemon area. Repeat the process for the watermelon and the watermelon area and don't forget to add a new tag watermelon area for the green area. 
drag now the cute cleaner to the scene, which will be our hero for this game, mini game, and set its layer to ignore raycast because we don't need it to detect itself. Add a circle collider 2D to it, also add rigid body 2D, and set its gravity to zero. Also add Ray Perception 2D, which provided by the ML Asians package. We will use that to create the ray casts or the field of view of our hero. Later we will see in the codes. Create a new folder named it scripts to contain all scripts we will be creating. Then create a, a new script called the cleaner and make that code inherit from agent save and close add the cleaner script to the cleaner game object now we need to create prefabs for the fruits that we will be spawning drag the lemon to the scene add 2d box collider to it also new, add a new tag name it lemon set that tag to the lemon and uh, let's create a new script called fruit to give each fruit we will be spawning an ID. Make sure that you set the collider as trigger. Now create prefabs folder and drag and drop the lemon to it to create prefab then delete the lemon game object from the scene. Repeat the process for the watermelon and set a new tag for it watermelon. Create a new game object name it scene controller also add a new script called scene controller make it empty for now and add it to the game object. Also create a new game object, name it the Cleaner Academy and create another script, name it the Cleaner Academy and make that code inherit from Academy. Of course, don't forget to set using ML agents. The Academy will contain the brains that will be training in addition to the player brain. Now let's create the script that will control the fruits inside each basket. Create a new script, name it fruit area controller. We need public string fruit tag to specify which type of fruits we'll be including in this fruit area. And we need a list of game objects which will represent all the placement area inside the fruit area. For example, we will have five lemons or five watermelons. Also we will need a reference for the scene controller because we will be controlling this fruit area from the scene controller. Then define a public class called fruitbox item which will include the transform each of each placement area and a bool if a fruit is placed in that location. Now define a list of fruitbox items and name it fruit box. It will be a new list of fruit box item. Also, you need a bool to check if the box fruit box is full or not. It will be triggered on when we have six items of the fruit. On start for each placement area in the placement areas, we add a fruit box item to the list fruit box and we take the placement area transform as the location and we set is placed to false. In update we create a for loop to link the sprite render of each placement area with the is placed bool. So each, each fruit inside the fruit box will be visible if the is placed bool is true and will be invisible if the is placed is false. Also, we will be checking in update if the fruit box is full each frame by using system.link.all uh, command to check that all the fruit box items are placed or not. If they are all placed, is full bool is true. Also, we need a public function to reset the fruit box by setting the is placed bool for each item to false and setting the is full bool to false. And finally, we need a public function to add the fruit 
by passing to it a game object which is the fruit we are collecting then we check for each item inside the fruit box if is placed bool is false we set that bool to true we destroy the fruit then we break the loop now add the fruit area controller to both the lemon area and watermelon area set the fruit tag to lemon for the lemon area and link the scene controller to it also set the fruit tag to watermelon in the watermelon area and link again the scene controller to it now get ready for a big chunk of codes we will be coding the scene controller which will control everything in our scene let's start by creating public class called spawn locations which will include uh, a bool if the location is used or not and the transform of that location and the landowner of it so we will be, we will need a public enum landowner which will allow us to choose between fruit area or none then we will need a bunch of game object lists uh, a list for the fruit areas which will contain the watermelon and the lemon area uh, a list of game objects for fruits which will include the watermelon and the lemon game objects uh, a list for game objects which is the fruits to spawn what we will spawn next and also a list of game objects for the spawned fruits to track the uh, fruit that is already spawned also we will need a game object for the spawn points and we will need also a list of spawn locations and we need a, a reference to our agent which is the cleaner code on start we prepare the spawn locations by going to each transform of each spawn point which we created earlier and adding an item to the spawn locations list setting the bool for each one to false and getting the transform of each spawn point and setting also the land owner to none since those sp spawn points still empty also in start we fill the fruits to spawn list using our current fruits in update we check the spawned fruits list to check if we didn't spawn any fruit yet then we spawn a fruit and to do so we need a private function called spawn fruit inside that function we do endless for loop and we check first if there is no spawn locations available or we don't have any fruits to spawn we break the loop then we set a random spawn location using uh, the random command and we set a range between 0 to the number of the spawn locations using spawn locations dot count also we pick a random fruit from our fruits list by creating an integer random fruit and randomizing its value between 0 and the amount of fruits we have then we check the spawn location which we picked randomly if it's used or not and if it's not used and the land owner of it is none which means is empty then we instantiate a game object called fruit using the randomly selected fruit and we set the instantiated game object position to the randomly selected spawn point location and also to its rotation which is quaternion identity and we add that fruit to the spawn fruits list and we set the spawn location to used and finally we break that loop but before spawning the fruit we need to check if the fruit box 
is full, we need to remove that kind of fruit from the fruits to spawn list because we don't need, want to spawn a lemon if the lemon box is full of lemons. So we create a new function called remove fruit to spawn if the box is full and we check each area in the fruits area and if the fruit area is full we remove the kind of fruits it contains from the fruits to spawn list. I just remember that we need to add a line in the fruit area controller. When we deliver the fruit successfully, we need to remove that fruit from spawned fruits list. And to access the spawned fruits list, we need to change that from private to public in the scene controller. Also, after spawning each fruit, we need to clear the spawn points except the ones that owned by a fruit area. And I've just noticed that I named the class spawn locations by mistake. I should have named it as spawn location single, which will be more logical in building the codes. So I'll change the class name from spawn locations to spawn location because the list of spawn locations contains items of spawn location. So for each spawn location in the spawn locations list, we check if it's if the landowner is not a fruit area, we reset that spawn, spawn location by setting the landowner to none and setting the used bool to false. Then we call that function in the spawn fruit function after the line of adding the fruit to the spawned fruits. We want the fruit area to be placed randomly each time the game resets. So we create a new function called randomly place fruit areas. And for each fruit area in the fruit areas, we keep looping randomly till we find a spawn location which is not used. Then we place, we change the fruit area position to that random location and we set that spawn location to be to used and the uh, landowner to fruit area then we break the loop. Then we apply the same concept to randomize the position of the cleaner by creating a new function called move agent to random location and we do the same steps. Now we need to create all the functions that will help us resetting the scene. We start by this spawn all fruits function which will remove all the spawned fruits from the scene and also clear the spawned fruits list. We also need to reset all the fruit boxes, so for each fruit area, in the fruit areas, we get the component fruit area controller and we call the function reset fruit box which we created earlier in the fruit area controller. Then we need to restore the fruits to spawn because we have removed some during playing the game, so we clear the fruits to spawn list and we refill it using the fruits list available. Then we need a function to reset all spawn points. So, so for each spawn point, we reset the used bool to false and we set the land owner to none. And finally, we need a function that returns a bool to check if all the fruits areas are filled by checking each fruit area if full then it returns true. I have also to correct this error by setting the landowner here to fruits area. 
I wrote fruits area, it should be landowner.fruit area. Let's save our scripts and go back to our scene. Now we need to link the game object with the scene controller. So for the fruit areas, we need to link the lemon area and watermelon area. And for the fruits, we need to add the prefabs we created of the lemon and the watermelon. Also drag the fruits spawn points to spawn points. And finally link the cute cleaner to the agent. Now everything is ready to start coding our cleaner, the cute cleaner, our player. But first, before we start coding how this cleaner will learn, we need uh, to set a player brain for it, as if we are controlling it first. To do so, pr let's create player brain by going to create ML agents and choosing player brain, place that inside brains folder and rename it to player brain. Now the controls will consist of four keys. We will use the W button for going up and we give it one value and we, go in, we need to go down by pressing S and we give it a value of two. To the left we use A and we give it value 3 and to the right we use D and we give it value 4. Then we assign that brain inside this cleaner script and we also assign it to the academy. Make sure that reset on done is checked and set the max steps to 5k that means we will reset the scene each time the player do 5k steps. Also you can increase the speed of training by increasing the uh, time interval for each decision is taking. So let's set it to 3. Let's start by creating the variables we will be using. We need a float to control the movement speed and we need another float to control the rotation speed and a third float to check the current rotation. We also need a reference to the rigid body and we need a reference to the ray perception 2D and we need also a bool use vector orbs that will be toggling on when we want to collect the observations. We need also to create private pool named is carrying fruit to check if we are carrying a fruit currently or not. We also need a game object uh, carried fruit to know what type of fruit we are currently carrying and, also, and finally we need an integer to store in it the fruit ID. Let's override the initialize agent function which you can say it's similar to the start function and assign the rigid body there and the ray perception 2D. Then we need to override the agent action function which passes vector action which is an array of floats represents the brain controls which we set in the player brain and this function also you can say it is similar to the update function so each frame we checking if we are carrying a fruit or not and if we are carrying a fruit we change that fruit position to the player position so it appears that the player is carrying the fruit then we need to set up the movement controls by creating a movement control function and passing to it the vector action. We create a float called action to store the vector action value in it and we do a switch based on what value we got. So in case we got one, we are moving up and we add to the current position transform up which represents 
uh, going one pixel toward the Y axis and we multiply that with the movement speed and time dot delta time and in case we, the value is 2 then we are moving down and we deduct from current position 1 on the Y axis multiplied with the movement speed and time dot delta time and in case the value is 3 we take the current location and deduct from it the rotation speed multiplied with time dot delta time and that means we are rotating to the left and we set that new rotation using the quaternion dot Euler and in case the value is 4 we are rotating to the right and we reverse the process let's save and test the controls you'll see when we click play we'll get an error that there is a mismatch between the vector observation values and what we got actually we were expecting to get one at least one observation but we got zero so we changed that in the player brain by setting the vector observation space size to zero because we don't have any observations yet also let's adjust the speed to more logical values like movement speed to 5 and also the rotation speed to 300 and also I noticed that I didn't link the scene, scene controller to the cleaner so let's link it also so now the control is working perfectly let's continue coding let's override the function agent reset to decide what will happen when we reset our agent so we will call all the functions that we created in the scene controller here like empty spawn points and resets fruit boxes restore fruits to, sp to spawn move agent to random location and randomly place the fruit area and finally despawn all fruits now we need to override the collect observations function in which we will decide what our agent will observe so let's set the ray distance in which decides how far can the player see by declaring constant float named ray distance and set it to 5f also we need to decide what angles can the player see so uh, you can say it's like the field of a view so we set a various uh, angles to make our view wide we set an angle on 20 90 160 um, 135 70 and 110 then we will set a list of strings an array of strings what kind of detectable objects we will see and we previously set a tags for the wall watermelon the lemon and watermelon area lemon area so we will be observing all of those so we add vector observation which represents the ray perceived the length of it the angles of it at, and what are the kinds of objects that we want to detect using their tags we will also observe our agent position on the X and the position on the Y and we will also observe what is the ID of the current uh, carried fruit also we will observe if we are carrying a fruit or not all those observations will help our agent to learn We also need to set a function to adjust the carry the fruit ID by creating a new void called update carried fruit ID. So if the carried fruit is not null, we get its ID. We have set the lemon ID to one and watermelon to zero. Else we set the ID to minus one which means we are not carrying anything now we finally reached 
the fun part where we'll be training our agent and the main concept regarding this point is to reward the agent when he achieve a good result and we punish him when we he do bad behaviors so let's start by punishing our agent <laughs> to encourage him to moving to move and hurry to toward getting rewards so in the update the agent action function we punish him each frame he didn't do anything by dividing by adding a reward minus one divided the max uh, into the maximum steps which have has been set to 5k currently then let's punish our agent for hitting the walls by creating uh, a function on collision enter 2d because the walls has been set not to be triggers so there is physical collusion with the walls and we set a reward which is punishment minus one each time the player hits the wall then we create a function on trigger enter 2d because all the rest of the game objects uh, colliders has been set to triggers except the walls so if we are not colliding with anything and uh, carried fruit is null we return if we are colliding with a game object tagged uh, as a lemon or a water lemon then we set the carried fruit to that game object and we change its tag to what it's named plus carried so for example if we collided with a lemon we set that lemon to be the carried fruit and we change its tag to lemon carried so we need to add two new tags lemon underscore carried and watermelon underscore carried then we disable that lemon collider and we give our agent a reward for collecting the fruit I think 0 0.7 will be a good reward for now we don't know yet till we start training then we check if we are carrying a fruit and the carried fruit game object is not null then we hit it a watermelon area or a lemon area we compare the tags now if we are carrying a watermelon and hit it a watermelon area or if we are carrying a lemon and we hit it a lemon area we give our agent a good reward one I think it's good then we add that fruit to the fruit box else that means the agent has failed to deliver the correct fruit to the correct uh, fruit area so we punish our agent by giving him uh, a punishment worth 0 0.5 I forgot to call the function done when we are hitting a wall because when we hit a wall we want to reset the scene also when the player fails to bring the correct fruit to the correct uh, fruit area we punish him then we re reset the scene and finally we want to give our agent a generous reward if he managed to completely fill all the fruit boxes by creating a, a function on trigger stay 2d so we checking if we hit it, a fruit box we check all the fruit box if they are all full then we give a great reward which is 2 to the agent then we call the DOM function to reset the scene let's save the script and 
do the preparations required for starting the training. If you click play to test the scene, you will get uh, an error saying that we are expecting to receive zero observations, but we received 53. So we need to change that in the player brain, change the vector observation space size to 53. I've just noticed that I forgot to assign the placement areas inside each fruit area. So let's check the lemons and add them to the lemon area. Also, let's drag the watermelons into the placement areas inside the watermelon area. Let's test the scene to check if everything going well. Seems I need to set the fruits, the spawned fruits uh, layer to be higher than the agent. So let's go to the lemon, set the order layer to two. Also do the same for the watermelon. Also I've noticed that I have typos in writing the tags of uh, lemon area. I double, I, I wrote double M in that. Additionally, I noticed that I have flipped the controls for turning right and turning left. So just to change the minus to plus and the plus to minus in the rotation controls. I've also corrected the typo in the lemon, one of the lemon tags. Also, I did a mistake by comparing the fruit areas to the fruits. I should have compared the fruit areas to fruit plus carry tag. So I need to add underscore carried to the place where we comparing the fruit area to the carried fruit. I, I set by mistake lemon instead of carried lemon lemon carried. Also change the watermelon to watermelon carried. And finally change the cleaner order of the sprite to 1 to be above the fruit area. So 0 is the fruit areas, 1 is our agent, 2 is the fruits. So now everything is working perfectly as a player. Now we need to create a learning brain. Go to the brains folder, right click, create ML agents, learning brain, and name it the cleaner brain. Then go to the cleaner academy and add a new brain and assign the cle cleaner brain there and set control to active because we will be training that brain. Then go back to the cleaning brain and copy the parameters from the player brain by selecting that from copy brain parameters. You will know that the parameters has been copied correctly if you see the same number in the space size for the cleaning brain and the player brain, 53. Then assign the learning brain to our agent, the cute cleaner, and now we are ready to install the ML agents. I have included the steps to install the ML agents in the description and I will go quickly through the installation steps. Install Anaconda for Windows using the default settings. Run Anaconda Navigator once, then close it. Go to Edit the system environment variables then go to the path and make sure those four paths had been added the anaconda scripts folder and the anaconda exe file also the python open anaconda prompt then go to the folder where you place the ml agents type conda create dash n ML agents Python 3.6 then type activate ML agents you need that command each time you wanna use the ML agents 
Then enter the command pip install tensorflow 1.7.1. Tensorflow will help you see statistics and graphs about how well your trainings are going. Then change directory to ML agents, ms, ml agents ms, and enter the command pip install e dot to install the ML agents environments. And finally, go to the directory of ML agents and enter pip install e dot to install the ML agents. Now we are ready to start our trainings. We just need to do final step is to adjust the trainer config file not to stop training after 50,000 steps. We need to increase that to 5 million steps. So go to trainer config file and change max steps from 5 to 500. Then enter or copy the following command mlagent-learn Then place the path to your trainer config file double dash run and enter an ID for your brain name it any unique name like the cleaner one then double dash train then hit enter Till you see Unity logo, then you can hit play inside the editor to start the training. And now the training started, but nice, the cleaner is not moving. Let's check why it's not moving. Go to the cleaning brain and change the number of vector action branches to 5. It was set to 1, that means the player only standing without moving. We change it to 5 because uh, one, uh, 0 means we are standing, 1 moving up, 2 going down, 3 rotating left, and 4 uh, rotating right. So we have 5 possibilities. Then enter again the training command and let's start the training. Okay, everything is going fine, but to make the training goes faster, we can duplicate our area as many times as we want to make the training goes faster and all the observations collected from each copy will be directed to the same brain, so the cleaner will learn faster. So move all the game objects except the camera and the academy to a uh, a new game object called area and make as many copies as you want from that preferably have eight copies then start the training again after training some we noticed that the cleaner is not learning much we barely reach a mean of 1, which is not good. We expecting to reach at least at least 2, which means collecting around 3 fruits. So let's investigate what we did wrong and how to make the, the, the cleaner learn better. After some investigations and experiments, we discovered that we are observing the fruit carried fruit ID before updating it, so we have to move the update carried ID before observing the carried fruit ID. Also, it appeared that we are spoiling our agent much by rewarding him for collecting the fruit, so let's decrease the reward from 0.7 to 0.5. Additionally, it appeared that punishing our agent much for delivering the fruit to the wrong place, uh, preventing him from doing this action again, so the punishment was 0 0.5, 
we decrease that to 0 0.05 also we found a bug that when you collect a full set of fruits for example you collected six lemons that lemon is not removed from fruits to spawn lists so that creates the possibility to spawn additional lemon so the cleaner will be forced to try delivering it by mistake to uh, the watermelon area and fail knowing that we set a function to deal with that but it appeared then that the update of the scene controller is executed before the update of fruit area controller so to solve that easily go to the project settings script execution order and make sure that the fruit area controller is executed before the scene controller Make sure to change the brain ID each time you do a training to be able to compare the results. I left the training for around one hour and we reached around 1,500,000 steps and we started to get great results that reached uh, sometimes a mean reward of 11. When you stop the training, it will create a brain file for you with extension.nn inside the models folder and at any time you can check the graphs about how well the trainings went using the command tensorboard and set the log directory to summaries and the port to 6006 Then enter the link that it gives you in any browser to check the graphs. Here you can compare the results of your trainings, check how each training took in time and what is the average reward it took and how well each graph did compared to other graphs of the training you did previously. When you are happy with the results of any training, you can go to the models folder and to the training name folder. You will find a brain with the extension.nn. Copy that to your project. Then go to the cleaning brain and assign that brain as a model for this brain. And finally hit play and enjoy the results of your training. Now as you can see the agent can collect the fruits and bring them correctly sometimes to the correct fruit area. I hope you benefited from this tutorial. Feel free to share with us the results uh, of your project if you did it and share with us what rewards can give better results, what punishment might be better, what observations can improve these trainings. And of course our Patreons can download the full projects and all experiments we are doing in Binary Lunar. Thanks for watching and until next video, see you soon.